This video is a tutorial on the meter. The most important thing about a meter to sort of understand and maybe even the core concept of electronics is there's typically three quantities where it's kicking around. Volts, current, and resistance. Volts is given the symbol V. Volts is the units here, and typically you'll see V for the units in there. Uh, current is given the symbol I, units of amperes or amps, how many amps are flowing. Units are given the symbol A. Resistance here is usually given the symbol R, has units of ohms, and the Greek letter omega is used to signify, signify resistance. So these three things in electrons are very different quantities. And we'll talk more about the interrelation between them when we talk about Ohm's law, but for now just know that they're different. They're not the same. They, they must not be used interchangeably, and they cannot be because they're different. So that's what's important about a meter here is the reason why a meter looks so complicated is because it sort of in one device can measure all three of these things. And we'll go through them in different videos, some sample measurements here. But like, for instance, on this meter here, which is a typical one here, you see over here the words, this, the symbols DCV. This stands for direct current volts. Now, I know it's already a mixture of some terms, but DC is pretty historical. But direct current or DC always means unchanging. So these are unchanging volts right here. So in other words, this is expecting to measure a voltage whenever the, 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 the knob is set into this range here. It's expecting to measure a voltage that isn't changing. And the reason why there are different scales on here is because, for instance, if say you put the, the knob right here on the 20 volt scale, that means that the meter is currently set to measure a maximum of 20 volts. So if you go over that maximum, the, measure, the meter is going to say something like overload. It can't do it. But then on the other hand, you don't always want to be on a 20 volt scale, say, if you're only trying to measure something very small, like, say, a thousandth of a volt or half a volt. In that case, you'd want to turn the meter down here. This is 2000 M. The M stands for millivolt, 2000 millivolts here. This would be a maximum reading of 0.2 volts here. Here's 200 millivolts here, a maximum reading of 0 0.02 volts. So see, you can make the, the scale very sensitive with these right here. Or if you're going to go up more and more, there's 200 full scale and 1,000 volts full scale. So these are all meant to measure constant voltages here on a variety of scale and maxima here. So this is one way the meter can be used to measure voltages here. The other way is if you turn it over here to AC volts. Now, AC corresponds to alternating current. I know it's a traditional term, but whenever you see AC, it's referring to a voltage that changes as time goes on. It is not constant. The meter has to go into a different mode to make those measurements here. This has two maximum scale settings, 200 and 750. The 200 is a good scale for doing a lot of household AC voltage measurements in the United States, which is always at about 110 or 120 volts. If you went to Europe and tried to make the measurements here, you'd have to go up to 750 because the AC voltages in houses in Europe are up at 220 volts. So see, there's two scales just for measuring voltage right here. Now, if you look at what the two leads are plugged into here, the red and black leads here, you can see that there's three holes on the meter here. One is labeled 10 amps DC. This is a very large current scale. So if the needle was put all the way down to here, you would plug the red lead into this jack right here and the black one into the common right here, and you'd be able to measure, be able to measure DC currents up to about 10 amps. If you exceed 10 amps, you'll blow the fuse inside the meter here. So just continuing then, this next jack here is labeled volts, ohms, and milliamps. The reason why we have that is if we put it on the V scale, means voltage here. That means with the meter, we're ready to measure volts. So we had it configured just like this, the way we had it before I unplugged it. And we turn the knob over here to some voltage scale here, we'd be all set to measure volts. Any one of these DC voltages right here, or even onto the AC voltages here, the meter would be ready for that. The ohms right here is an indicator that this meter is able to take resistance measurements. Again, it's a different quantity. Resistance and volts are not the same thing. So if we turn the knob over here, over into the, the ohm section right here, where the res these resistances are right here, you can see I have maximum scales of 200 ohms, 2,000 ohms, 20,000 ohms, all the way up to 2,000 kilo ohms right there, which is 2 million ohms. So we can have some very large scales right here, and if I would have it on a scale like this and then touch these leads across something, the meter would tell me the resistance of it. So if you remember the, the video we had on resistors, if you put the meter in one of these scales here and start touching these leads across the resistance, the resistor leads, you'll be able to measure the resistance directly. You wouldn't have to decode the color codes, and we'll do that in a, in a later video. The last thing that the meter is able to measure then are a few other things here, like DC current. So if you look at this last segment over here, you see DCA. 
A, of course, stands for the ampere, and DC, once again, means current that isn't changing. So if you have a bunch of currents that aren't changing here, up to 200 microamps, 2,000 microamps, 20 milliamps, and 200 milliamps, these can allow you to measure current here. So that corresponds to the little MA down here on the label. These are all the currents that are, they're able to measure. So look very carefully at your meter. Yours is probably different than mine. If it is or it isn't, they usually have all of these features here, but that's why it's sometimes even called a multimeter because it measures three different things. Volts, current, and resistance. You have to have the knob setting on the correct setting before you can expect to measure what you think you want to measure.